I have 12 different buildings that I teach my kids. I call them buildings. I have, I have 12 different buildings, five major buildings and seven minor buildings. And the five major buildings are, uh, number one is uh, having a building self-awareness within the students, self-awareness. Uh, the second one is autonomy, student voice and student choice, uh, respect, building respect, uh, building relationship, relationships, and uh, the last one is uh, building a growth mindset. So a growth mindset. So those are the large major uh, buildings I teach in my classroom. And then there's there are seven smaller ones, which are uh, having a strong mind, focus, communication, uh, building a sense of uh, capacity of love, um, hard work, um, character, and teamwork. So those are the those are the twelve altogether. So let me give you an example of how that works in the classroom. Say it's the first day of school. I'll put up a math teaching math. I'll put up a assignment. I'll put up a uh, I don't know math problem on the board. It's a difficult math problem. And I'll say to the students, okay, class, you guys got five minutes and seventy five uh, five minutes and forty five seconds or something to do this math problem. Uh, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going. So don't raise your hand and ask me for anything. I'm not going to give you any help. Go. And I'll stand back. I'll just go. And I'll wait. And I'll see what happens. And I'm just seeing that I know they're not going to get it right. I'm just seeing how they're going to respond to that. I want to see how they're going to respond to that. So I sit back and wait. And time passes. I'm looking how people fidget, how people look frustrated and angry, how people can't believe that I have just said go on this problem where they have no idea what to do. And then the five minutes and 45 seconds pass. And I, and I say, all right, guys, pencil down. Uh, let me have an answer. And I know nobody has an answer. I said, let me have an answer. Uh, no. Why don't we have an answer? I'll ask the class. Why don't we have the answer? And somebody will raise their hand and say, you know what? That's because we don't know nothing about this problem. The minute you put that problem up there, you said that you weren't going to help me, I just gave up. I gave up. I said, good. Great. That's good. OK, so let's talk about that for a second. When you give up, that's not having a strong mind. And in this classroom, we develop having a strong mind. See, in life, you're going to have problems. You're going to face problems that you have no idea how to solve it. And you have to develop this idea of, I have a strong mind. I can figure this out. I am a problem solver. I am a critical thinker. I can figure this out. So that's what we're trying to develop here. So I know that you don't understand that, but we need to develop this having a strong mind idea. What else, guys? What else? Well, you know, like I couldn't, uh, you said you were going to help us. I was like, right, right. But I, you guys can help each other. I never said that. What about teamwork? I go, what about if one of you stood up and asked another person? You could have done that, right? So because in life, you're going to have to work in teams. You're going to have to work with people you don't like. And you're going to have to learn how to, to work with them. I go, and, and, and in order to work with them, you have to communicate. You have to be able to communicate. And that's another thing that we're talking about, communication. You have to be able to communicate. And if you can't communicate, you can't work in your teams, and you can't be successful. So you have to be communication. So I'll take a problem like that, like just something as simple as that. Student autonomy. We'll have a science project and we'll say like, all right guys, we have to develop these models of uh, cells. We've got to develop cell models here. And I'll ask this class, I'll say, okay guys, what do you guys think is a good way to represent our understanding of cells? And well, they'll start talking and I'll, we'll start this whole student voice thing. And they'll give their opinions because it's very important that they learn to give their opinions. Um, I remember going to college and sitting in a college classroom and so afraid to stick up my hand because I could not give my opinion. I felt I was stupid and dumb. And to raise my hand and be like, oh man, everybody's going to know that I'm not too smart. Uh, I'm just going to keep my hand down. So I tell my kids, let's practice speaking. Pick up your hand. Give your opinion. I don't care what it is. State it. So they'll say, okay, well, let's, like, can we relate it to things? I'm like, perfect. Let's relate it to things. Give me an example. Kid will say, well, like cells, for instance, like this classroom could be a cell, right? Like these walls are like cell, the cell wall, and you could be like the nucleus, and the cytoplasm is like the air that we breathe. Uh, can we relate? Yes, that is perfect. Does anybody want to join that group? And they'll say, oh, yeah, we want to join that group. Perfect. There it is. So I'm teaching autonomy, student voice, student choice, uh, communication, group work, all this stuff that is needed in life. Um, you know, and then another kid will raise their hand and say, you know, well, what about a car? Can we relate to, yes, we can relate to a car. Give an example of that. Well, what about, like, the, the walls of the car is a cell wall, and the engine could be, like, the nucleus, right? And I'm like, great. Anybody want to join that group? Perfect. Then you guys develop that one. And so it's all about 
doing that. And, I, and again, back to my, my rules, rule stuff, I don't like rules. I don't set really strict rules, like this is exactly how it's supposed to be. I want them to explore. I want them to, to figure things out. Uh, and I'm okay with whatever they turn in as long as they're thinking. And it's usually a good word. If it's not, uh, they'll, they'll fix it. It's usually a good word. Uh, another example that I do to teach these uh, 12, um, 12 buildings would be, uh, for instance, if we're having problems in the classroom, uh, I pause the class. I, I call it pausing in the classroom. So I'm sitting here, and I see a kid messing around, and they're arguing back and forth, and one guy is calling another girl, like, cursing at her. I can, I can see it happening. Cursing at her, making a big deal. So I'll pause the classroom and I'll be like, all right guys, can everybody stop what you're doing for a second? And I'll point somebody out and say, you, you had said to her that she is this, this foul word that she used, some kind of four letter word. And the, well, the reason why you said that was why? Can you please explain that? Well, I'm mad because she, she took my scissors and, okay, so let's talk, let's, let's talk about self-awareness here. When somebody takes your scissors, you have choices. You can say, I'm going to act this way, and you'll get these benefits or these results, or I'm going to act this way, and I'm going to get this. This is going to happen. So you have choices, and I'll do it publicly. I'll do it publicly so everybody can see the thinking, the process behind this, this whole self-awareness thing. And I'll say stuff like, now, when you choose the, when you choose the curse at somebody, you already start cutting people off, and, and they start thinking, like, you know what, I'm not going to work with this guy anymore. When there's a group, I won't work with this person. Uh, he curses at people. I go, You'll, you start to lose um, reputation, respect, all that stuff is gone now. So well, that's the way I deal with problems versus the other way I deal with problems that a lot of teachers do is, what, you were cursing? Where's, your, where's that phone number? I'm going to call your mom right now. Right now, I'm going to get on the phone, I'm going to give her the phone to you, and you're going to talk to her and explain why you're cursing in the classroom. Teachers do that. Uh, oh, you're going to go down to the dean, or I'm going you know, to write a note home, all that stuff breaks relationship. All that stuff breaks relationship. You want to break relationship, do that stuff. Uh, you want to build relationship, talk things out. Talk things out and say, hey, you know what? Uh, let's talk this one out. Let's figure out what makes you mad. Let's figure out better choices. And let's do it together, because we're all in this together. We can all learn from our mistakes. Um, another one would be uh, just like uh, being, uh, saying hi every morning. That is huge. Let me give you an example of that. Have you ever been to a party and you don't really know anybody and you walk into the party and you're like, man, I hope my friend's there and you're like, it's just like, man, where is that person? And then you kind of sit there and nobody greets you and you're like, man, I just want to go home. I don't even want to be here anymore. This place is terrible. Okay, so, so that idea is why I greet everybody in the morning. Making them feel welcome the minute they walk into my classroom. Now I can stand at the door and I'll be like, hey, good morning, what's going on? What's happening, guys? What's happening? Nice shirt. I like that shirt. Cool hat. Good morning. And people will say good morning, people will shake my hand, and some people will just ignore me. Just ignore me. Just walk right by me and ignore me. I'm okay with that as long as they feel welcome. You feel welcome? You know, I said hi to you. Cool. Well, I'm, I understand. You're a middle school student. You think, well, yeah, I get it. I get it. So they just walk right by me, but I'm, I'm making them feel welcomed right out the gate, right out the gate. And we do something called commercial break. Uh, commercial break is we'll start to do some work, and then we'll take a pause like 20, 25 minutes in, and then I'll just say, okay, it's commercial break, guys. Does anybody have anything to share about anything that they would like to share about? It doesn't matter anything. And some kid will say, yeah, I went to McDonald's this morning, and I tried this new breakfast sandwich. It was pretty tasty. I, I liked it a lot, so I'm, I'm probably gonna buy a breakfast sandwich tomorrow. Cool. I, I, you know what sandwich is that? Oh, I, I'm gonna try that one too. Has anybody else tried that breakfast sandwich? And they raise their hand. Cool. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I was at the laundromat yesterday washing my clothes, and I saw Uriel uh, at the laundromat too. Cool. All right. Cool. And so they just start to share, and 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 you start off with nobody sharing, and then you start at the as the year progresses, you got everybody trying to share, and then you have to cut it off. All right, guys, that's enough. That's that's enough. But you're building that relationship. You're giving students voice. Uh, you're teaching kids how to listen. Just kids gotta listen. Students need to know how to learn how to listen. So when one person's speaking, everybody else has to to listen, be a good audience. All stuff that's needed in life later on when they get out of school. Um, so we'll do that whole commercial break thing. Um, another thing is, uh, I have these things written down here, kind of mm -hmm. using track here. Uh, mm -hmm. Test results. That's another thing. Um, I never give anybody less than 50%. I never give anybody less than 50%. So let's say there is a math test and there's 10 questions, they got one right. 
they got one right. I don't give them 10%. I don't put one out of 10 on the, the, in the grade book. I always give them 50%. And everybody knows this. Everybody knows that I only give 50%. And I tell them the reason why I give you 50% is because everybody needs a second chance. And everybody, uh, everybody does not need to be buried. We don't need to be buried because if I give you 10%, and then you fail the next test and get 10%, and then you fail the next test and get, now you're buried. Now you're buried. Now you start to develop this, I don't care. I can't, I can't get out of this hole anyway. How am I going to ever get out of this hole? So giving them 50% on the test, yeah, you fail, but there's a way to get out. You have 10% get you a D. 10% gain, you got 6%, you got a D. Now you move, now you got some momentum. Now you can move forward and start to move. So I always tell everybody, you know what, there's no way you're going to get less than 50%. So yeah, you can bomb, try your hardest, you can fill this test fine. Let's figure out where you made these mistakes. mistakes. What, how did you study? Who did you work with? How many hours did you spend? We need to change some things to build your grade up. So that's, that's what I do with the 50% thing. Um, another thing is uh, every day is a, is a brand new day. This is based on love and forgiveness. Uh, so a kid could, could blow up. I've had kids curse at me in the classroom before. And uh, kids could blow up in the classroom. And, and I, I constantly preach this all the time, and I practice it as well. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to practice it. Uh, so I'll tell the kids at the beginning of the year, every day is a new day. I don't care what happens. You, can, you sit here and curse at me. We have a hard problem. We have a difficult time. Every day is a new day. So say uh, I had a girl curse at me one time the classroom and, and the next day I'll say good morning to her and every day is a new day of forgiveness. We for, we're forgiven here. We practice forgiveness. Um, and that goes a long way. That builds a, that you're demonstrating love. They learn to forgive. Uh, that builds a relationship. If every day is a new day, I don't have anybody taking advantage of that. Like, oh, if every day is a new, every day is a new day, then I'm just going to just, every, I can do whatever. <laughs> I don't have anybody taking advantage of that. But they just understand, just like we, if we had people in our lives say, you know what, you made a mistake, but tomorrow's a new day, and we're good, we're good tomorrow. If we had that all the time, we'd be good. And that's why I try to practice in the classroom. And one last thing I want to leave with you guys is, uh, is uh, this story, uh, and it relates to what I want to tell you right here. Uh, last, uh, in June, the eighth grade class was graduating, and the valedictorian was a student of mine. Yeah, it was a student of mine, and uh, she, I had her for sixth grade. And she's standing up there in front of everybody. And I'm just standing in the back. And I was like, oh, look, it, she's up there. That's cool. It's one of my old students. I taught her sixth and seventh grade. So I'm like, wow, that's, that's great. So I'm sitting there listening, and uh, she goes, yes, I would like to thank so-and-so and so-and-so. And she goes, I would like to thank Mr. Vergara um, because he, I remember in sixth grade, he told me, it's okay to make mistakes. It is okay to make mistakes. And so I took that idea of it's okay to make mistakes, and that, that led me to, to take chances. And because I took chances, I was able to do a lot of great things here at this school. So I just want to thank Mr. Regard for that idea. And I was super touched in the back. I was like, oh, man, that's, that's amazing. And I was like, did you hear that? And all the other teachers were like, man, shut up. I don't care about you. I don't care about you. Uh, shut up. And I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just keep that with myself. Uh, but, uh, that's what I. That's the last thing. Is uh, it is okay to make mistakes. So you you put you put something up on the board, and you tell them. You know what? I don't care if you don't get it right or just get the thinking going. Get the thinking going. Thinking, 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 thinking. Uh, it is okay to make mistakes, but you have to try because you'll have kids sit there and be paralyzed because they're afraid to make a mistake, and they'll sit there and they'll be paralyzed. And you have to tell them stuff like, okay. You can't, you, you can't just sit there. You're going to have to develop wins. Wins, 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 wins. Like, for instance, if you pick up your pencil, that is a win in my book because your pencil's off the table. If you put that pencil onto the paper, that's two wins you got there. You got two wins going for you. If you start to figure something out, you write some numbers down, you copy, you have an idea, you drew a picture of how to solve this math problem, that's a third win for you. You start to communicate and you say, hey, I don't understand what's going on. Can you please share? That's another win for you. You start to raise your hand and speak. You got win, 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 win. And you might not have the right answer, but you developed all these 12 skills that we're always talking about. And that's a win in my book. I don't care if you didn't have the answer. That's a win in my book. And so uh, 
that's what I teach. It's okay to make mistakes. You need to develop wins. If you if you look at okay, the problem, I need to get the right answer. If I don't get the right answer, then I failed. Well, and you're gonna have a lot of losses. You have a lot of losses. Let's get a lot of wins going. Let's get a lot of wins going. I have one more. I just saw it on my paper as I looked at this one. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, let me look. No, I don't. And that is that is that is all I'd like to share with you guys. But uh, th that's just my experience of working, my 14 years of experience working with kids. Uh, and it's, for me, it's all about building these skills, these life skills. And then once you build that, then you can build all the all the curriculum, math, science, English, history, whatever you're trying to build. Is, if you put the horse before the cart, if you try to teach them like just the problem, you don't do all that skill stuff, then they're just gonna. At least the kids I've worked with don't really respond to that too well. Um, any questions about anything, guys? <laughs>